Uh, next we get to uh, the main jet. Again, get a screwdriver that fits it very well. Uh, they'll come out with a little pressure. Again, if they're really super tight, then uh, you'll need to uh, bring it down. So what I'm doing right now is I'm screwing out just a few threads, tapping down. This is to loosen up the needle jet. A lot of guys don't realize that this needs to be taken out. That clogs up. There's passageways in there also. So I screw it out a little ways, tap it down, screw it away, tap it down. And you just keep tapping it down until you're all the way down to where there's no threads. Needle jets are usually difficult to get out. Uh, it's a very tight fit in there. So here's a little trick um, that I use. If you look, there's a little locator pin uh, at the very bottom of the car body there to uh, so you can get the needle jet in the correct position. So what I do is I remove the washer underneath the main jet. Then I screw the main jet in and just loosely doesn't have to be tight and then I'll look where that pin is and I'll use <coughs> magic marker or some way to mark where that pin is in relationship to the jet this way you can uh, get the uh, needle jet out without uh, damaging the uh, the housing or the needle jet because it, again it's soft brass so I'll remove the jet and um, use an old jet if you have one around if you're replacing jets use uh, one of those now I've taken that jet and I took it to a grinder and I ground a flat on the jet uh, basically down to where the threaded area is don't get into the threads but now this jet it's a tool now uh, it has a flat area uh, on the side there so now you screw that back into the needle jet. It doesn't have to be tight, but you want to line up that flat. Oh, I'm out of the frame. You line up that flat with the locator pin. So now you can take a screwdriver and bang on that jet, and it will push through, and it won't damage um, the needle jet or the... Uh, the housing because if you try to do it any other way uh, it'll damage the needle jet now the uh, as you can see the needle jet came out now once the needle jet's loose uh, go ahead and unscrew in the main jet and you can drop that out and needle jets are, are pretty tight in there so it'll take a little bit of wiggling you can do it through the front and the back of the carb, sometime through the top. Depends on how much corrosion, but it's a, it's a machine fit, so it's a very tight fit. So you just have to work it a little bit. Just be very careful. I kind of work it in and out from the front and back. And there it is. So there's your needle jet. Uh, it has numbers on it. And uh, you might want to write those down, too, for future reference. It's always good to have all those numbers so you don't have to tell the carb apart just in case you have to do changes and uh, and you have your little tool so keep that in your toolbox so you don't have to make another one uh, every time you are doing carbs and we're almost done uh, next thing we I get to is uh, the fuel valve seat uh, 10 millimeter wrench or socket uh, go ahead and loosen up and unscrew that. There will be a fiber washer underneath. So that's pretty much self-explanatory. Go ahead and pull those out. Now if you look you'll see uh, there's this brass tube and uh, go straight through to your choke. The choke is a flood type choke so whenever you open the choke basically it just pulls straight fuel straight from the um, uh, flow bowl so uh, you don't want to you leave your choke on too long because it's very easy to, to uh, flood out um, 
your motor because a lot of fuel can flow through there when you're kicking the motor over. And now we remove the uh, fuel bowl gasket. Uh, you can either remove the clamp or not. Um, it's really not necessary, but uh, that's up to you. Uh, and finally we get to the air screw. That is a screw that lets in the amount of air to mix in with your uh, the fuel from your pilot jet. So um, uh, that's a pretty important in the tuning and you'll find that in uh, Maxwell's site um, or Dale's site. Pop the uh, air screw out. Uh, sometimes the spring didn't want to come out so you can take a small screwdriver. Um, or even the float pin and uh, they're sometimes difficult to get out but uh, not too difficult so um, and basically now everything's ready to clean uh, you don't want to soak uh, they're obviously the rubber parts in the carb cleaner so you might want to um, keep the top gasket uh, loose and separate after you've cleaned everything and then you can uh, glue that to the top in the right position so it's easy to assemble and here I am basically just kind of putting everything in order so uh, you can kind of see where everything's at and that's uh, the disassembly uh, to assemble just uh, follow in reverse order and uh, you should have a brand new looking clean carb that'll not leak so there you go And before buttoning everything up, you want to set your float level. So, make sure you have the gasket and seat in properly. The new gasket and seat, the new valve, pointing in down, with the carb upside down, with the pin in and the floats. Um, especially when the carb falls over, you want to check it. Nice. Uh, I set my uh, digital caliper to around... Uh, 24 millimeters float level is 24 to 25 millimeters so I just go ahead and set that lock it in place and with the gasket removed we get that question a lot with the gasket removed you just uh, hold the carb upside down and measure to see where your float site heights at I know it's out of the picture but basically I'm measuring from the uh, base gasket surface to the top of the float. Uh, this one was off just a little bit. So you pull the pin out and carefully bend the tang down or up whichever way you need to go. And make sure the valve's still there in the inside. And reinstall the uh, float pin. and remeasure and once that's done your floats are good to go and you can finish uh, reassembling the carb